everyone. My name is Tatiana Olaru and welcome to our first English lesson. Today we will begin a series of lessons with the general topic appearances where we will be focusing on people's appearances. The first lesson is entitled Head and Face. So in this lesson we will read tongue twisters with the sound I, use conversational formulas when greeting someone, discuss what would happen if everyone looked the same, we will learn vocabulary to describe people's appearances and we will practice active vocabulary in context. We will begin with a warm-up activity and the first activity is pronunciation. We will practice the sound I. This is the first tongue twister that I have prepared for you. It is an easy one. I will read it twice. The first time I will read as slowly as possible for you to understand and repeat after me. Little Mike left his bike like tyke at spikes. Now let's try a little quicker. Little Mike left his bike like tyke at spikes. Very good. Let's move to the second tongue twister. When you write copy, you have the right to copyright the copy you write. In this time, quicker. When you write copy, you have the right to copyright the copy you write. Very well. And the last one, this is a little bit more difficult, as slowly as possible. I spy with my little eye a fly on a pie by a dry piece of bread. I spy with my little eye a guy in the sky who might fall on his head. This was the slow variant. Let's try quicker. I spy with my little eye a fly on a pie by a dry piece of bread. I spy with my little eye a guy in the sky who might fall on his head. Very well. Imagine you meet someone. It could be your friend, pen friend, your teacher or classmates, and you have a lot of things to share. So, what would you say? Well, the first step in starting a conversation is your greeting. This is what you say at the very first moment that you see someone or speak on the phone. When greeting someone, it is important to use greetings according to the situations. There are many situations in which we may need more formal language in English. Such situations can be when you meet teachers or when you meet neighbors or you, when you meet relatives and family acquaintances or you just show respect to old people or people that we, you don't know and we don't know very well. In these situations, we use more formal or even professional language to show respect, to show the importance of the situation or even the importance of the person. Let's see some words and expressions that we can use in such situations and even the situation itself. So look at the screen. Good morning, Miss Jones. I'm so happy to see you. Good morning, Paul. How do you do? How was your summer? So, in this beginning of a conversation, we have the formulas good morning, and these are the most common formulas of greeting someone in a formal situation. In this case, Paul greets Miss Jones showing respect. He says, good morning, Miss Jones. Miss Jones shows uh, also respect by calling him Paul, 
by the first name, first of all, showing respect and showing that she knows him. So at the question, how was your summer? Paul says it was terrific. How about you? How have you been? I've been great, thanks. I've missed school and my pupils. Thanks for asking. In this second part of the conversation, how have you been? I've been great, thanks. I've missed school and my pupils. Thanks for asking, Paul. How have you been? It is a very simple, polite question to use in a formal situation like this in the example. It is a very respectful way to ask how are you with someone that you have not seen in a long time or someone you do not see every day. Now we will continue with uh, other formulas, other expressions and words we use, but in an informal situation. With colleagues you know very well, with friends, with classmates, and with people you are friendly with, but you are not close friends with, it is appropriate to use a little bit more relaxed language. In such situations can be with Yes, of course, colleagues you see every day, classmates, friends and fam family, seeing an old friend. Let's see an example of a dialogue of informal conversation. Hello, Susan. It's good to see you. Hi. Hey, Paul. These three formulas, you know already them, yeah? So they are the most familiar and they are the most appropriate in an informal conversation. So, it's good to see you. This is an expression that you can use with uh, someone that you have not seen for a long time. Okay, how are you doing? How are you doing? Most of the time the word hello is accompanied with one of these questions. How are you doing? Not bad. Actually, great. And you? How are you? I'm fine. Long time no see. When was the last time we saw each other? So, this expression, long time no see, when was the last time we saw each other? We use when we haven't seen someone for a long time and this question, when was the last time we saw each other, is an easy way to start a conversation about what has happened since you last saw each other. Let's see the answer. Doing well. We've just returned from our summer vacation. Well, it was great to see you. I have to get going. Have a good day. Goodbye. You see, in this last um, part of the conversation, we have it was great to see you. And this formula, actually we can use it at the end when we want to end up the conversation to say that it was a pleasure to see you or to meet you or to have a small talk with you. Okay, we move to the next information I have for you. So try practicing these formulas, words, expressions next time you see a teacher or you meet friends or classmates. I am sure you will do them right. Okay, now imagine you meet someone. It could be your classmates or it could be your friends or waiting for someone. So and this situation is happening on the street. Now, if you are there, think of the following situation. Look at the screen and you'll see a question. So, how do we recognize people when you see them on the street? How do you recognize them? Of course, when someone approaches you on the street, you firstly look at his or her face to determine who they are and 
you can usually instantly recognize the person. When trying to recognize someone from far away or when their face is obscured, the brain uses information from a person's body size and shape to figure out who the person is. So, basically, we identify people by their body. You see on the screen, the first element, as I said, is the face. So, from far away, we determine and we understand who the person is by the face. We know and we understand that the face can be oval or it can be round. Of course, it is pretty. Okay, so we can see their, their eyes. They can be either big or small. They can be any color. Of course, the mouth can be small or it can be big. The nose can be straight or it can be small or it can be also big. The hair we usually pay attention to the color, to the length, to the shape. It can be blonde, it can be short, it can be curly or wavy even, and it can be dry, but nobody notices such details. And the last, um, and we identify people by their body also. So, the body can be tall, the body can be slender, and it can be graceful as well. Now imagine all the people in the world or all the people around you look the same. How would that be? Let's see. Imagine, of course, this is John. Yes, this is one of your friends. This is Sam. This is Jack. How would you know that this is Jack and this is Sam? So they all look alike. This is Anne, this is Mary and this is Julia. This is the, uh, the situation when everybody looked the same. Do you like it? Would you like that everyone looked the same? I am not sure that uh, the world would look very nice if everyone looked the same. As I have said, we identify people by the parts of the face and head and we will see in detail some other elements of the eye. The eyebrow, the eyelid, the eyelash, the iris and the pupil. If we take the nose, the nose can be broad, it can be long, it can be flat, and it can be snub. The hair, it can be wavy, curly, straight, bald, and plaited or braided. We can have our hair styled, we can get a haircut and we can style our hair. Please take and, take and check the dictionary if you don't know some of these words and expressions, though many of them may be familiar to you. And it's time now to use these words in context Let's see this activity. Sarah, so we'll, you'll have to fill in the blanks using this new vocabulary. Sarah has large eyes with long, think a little bit. Grandfather has thick and has to trim them often. Mother and I have small noses. People say they are. You look great. Did you your... Okay, so you have time to think and to insert or to fill in the right words from the vocabulary. If you are ready, let's check the answers. Sara has large eyes with long eyelashes. Grandfather 
has thick eyebrows and has to trim them often. Mother and I have small noses. People say they are flat. You look great. Did you have your hair styled? Very good. Good job. So the next series of sentences. I heard that Ionella has to use an iron to make her hair. Uncle Tudor has lost his hair. He is completely... Most of my family has thin noses that measure 6 centimeters or more. Tom is at the barber. He is... Okay, let's see the answers. The answers should be like this. I heard that Yonella has to use an iron to make her hair straight. Uncle Tudor has lost his hair. He is completely bald. Most of my family has long, thin noses that measure 6 centimeters or more. Tom is at the barber. He's getting his hair cut. Very good. The girl in the picture seems happy because she's smiling, making her green eyes look more beautiful than ever. It looks like she has got straight and long nose on an oval face. Her long, wavy, blonde hair embellishes her even more. So, to end up the discussion, let us think how you understand the quote of the lesson. Appearances are often deceiving. Deceiving, this is the word that you may not know, so that is why you can check a dictionary. And but I can say that deceive to deceive means to give a mistaken impression. Appearances are about how others see us, perceive us, the way we dress, the way we talk, the way we act. When we see a person for the first time, we observe their external appearance. We see their clothes, their face and their accessories. Based on those things, we make a conclusion, a deduction about that person's personality. And then, when we really get to know a person, we share our thoughts with him or her and truly discover his or her personality. Do you remember the last time when appearances were deceiving when meeting someone. So, we are about to end the lesson and let's go back to what we have learned a vocabulary to describe people's appearances and we have practiced active vocabulary in context. So, we have done a lot of work today. See you next time!